the best man screwed the groom's mother between the meal and the dancing. The groom finds out and punches the best man, breaking his hand. The best man drives away and gets stopped by the police for drunk driving. Being a wedding photographer is awesome. Some hippie friends of my parents got married when I was about 14. And it was a location wedding at some earthy little mountain getaway in Tennessee. Only it was outside and in mid-August. And in Tennessee that's like 0 .90 degree. Full humidity weather. But that's okay. Since it was so hot they decided to do it barefoot in a creek. Well they had a cage of butterflies to release during the kiss. But as it turns out, they had all died because of the heat. But when the big moment came, someone opened the cage dramatically to let them free and like two half-dead butterflies stumbled out and the rest were shriveled and dead inside. The hippie bride screamed in horror. My cousin who, let's say, isn't playing with a full deck and thought that she had hired a caterer because she sat at a bar one night and said to this lady, you should do the food for my wedding. Waited until about an hour after the food should have logically arrived before starting to make some phone calls, only to find out that the caterer was on vacation in Costa Rica and had no idea that the bride thought she was doing food for the wedding. Domino's to the rescue about two hours later. But the reception being at a bowling alley with a keg in the middle of the dance floor was completely planned. Probably my own. We had planned a lovely wedding. But when it came time to actually put plans into motion I realized there was no way in hell my family and his family needed to be within several miles of each other much less the same venue. We decided we'd get married, just the two of us and the gentleman responsible for the paperwork. Planned a lovely little picnic type event. Our minister was a dear friend. We told him to bring his wife and we'd treat them to lunch afterwards. At a local duck pond that has a pretty gazebo we could use. Part 2, the morning of, and we apparently stepped into monsoon season. 20% chance of rain in the forecast had turned to 16 inches of rain overnight. With more on the way. We almost couldn't won't leave our house because the water was so high. I call friend and tell him to scratch the duck pond idea. Can he just meet us in town so nobody gets washed away? Well, we also run a farm so the easiest common ground that we all knew how to get there was the local feed store. Hubby and I arrive early, go inside and buy the feed we needed. As we come out, Brenda arrives and helps Hubby load feed into the back of our truck. Still pouring rain, I hear something and see a four or five week old kitten about to get washed into a storm drain so I grab it, wrap it in my jacket, and place it in the passenger seat of our truck before climbing into Friend's Honda Element. We say our vows sitting in the back seat, soaking wet and covered in hay and mud, and go our separate ways afterwards. Hubby learns we have a new cat. It was a cluster duck from beginning to end, but somehow it was perfect, and we have a hell of a story to tell our son, someday. TLDR, got married in a flooded tractor supply parking lot after loading feed and rescuing a cat. went to a wedding that my wife and I said will not last more than two years. The wedding was in the backyard of the bride's house. They had all the chairs and wedding arch set up outside. They set up a plastic tarp running down the aisle to walk on. Just before the wedding starts there are darkened clouds appearing. Should have been a sign to move the wedding inside. But they invited too many people to the damn thing. Just as they start the wedding, it begins to rain lightly. The father of the bride is walking the bride down the lane and slips on the wet tarp and falls on his ass. Bride is now at the front, raining harder. People start to cover up with whatever they have. Some people start to get up too. Part 2. Bride turns around and says to all, asterisk asterisk this is my wedding. 
No one is going to ruin it. You better all fucking sit your asses down. Asterisk asterisk we all sit back down and the wedding resumes. It is now raining pretty good. The grass is now turning into mud. A few ladies in the crowd and the bridesmaids makeup is now running down the faces. My wife has taken my jacket as a cover from the rain. They finish the vows and kiss. And then everyone runs to the house and garage to get out of the rain. Oh, remember how I said the grass was now mud? Yay, lots of people slipped and fell in the mud on the way to the house. We got to the house. Many people look terrible from the running makeup, muddy clothing, and soaking wet. A few of the women had to cover their chests and waist due to wet clothing becoming see-through. Most of the men were loaning their coats to the ladies to cover up. Dirty looks all around. Part 3 The wedding cake was outside, and now brought in. The rain made the decorations on the cake turn all runny and it looks horrible. The bride and groom began to cut the cake and feed each other. The smashed the cake pieces into each other's fastest then began a food fight with each other. My friend's wife got hit in the face with purple icing cake on her face and dress. The priest got hit with a yellow icing on his white robe. There was nothing left of the cake to serve. Food being served was still frozen in the middle of the food and the stuff that was not frozen was burned. The desert was sub to be the cake, but as said above, there was nothing left. There was a goodie bag that people got on the way out. Had a lollipop, a coupon for ice cream cone at McDonald's, a pencil with the bride and groom name on it, and Halloween size M&Ms. My wife, whose dress was filthy, her makeup was out of whack, and her hair was a mess said to me that she does not want to see those people again for six months she was so mad. The couple divorced 11 months later when the groom came home from work and found his wife getting double teamed by two guys. I got this our nanny's best friend was getting married and my wife and I were invited because we had given that couple a bed and breakfast gift certificate we were not going to use and they thought we should be at their wedding as a thank you. Okay, so the day come and we are sitting in a field on a farm on the hottest day of the year. High 90s. The bride is going to be transported from the house to the altar by horse-drawn carriage for about 2,000 feet away on a graded slanted dirt road. The signal for the carriage to head over is someone unbeknownst to us standing behind the seated guests and they proceed to blast a 12-gauge stow gun as the algo horse rears up and freaks out handler trying to regain control and horse collapses part 2 10 minutes of what's going on we find out horse has heat stroke and cannot pull carriage so instead of foregoing the carriage the bride's dad walks down to the wedding guest and asks for volunteers to help pull the carriage down to the altar. My wife nudges me and I say, there is no way I am sticking my toe in that pool of dumb. About six people volunteer including one midget. So they all get in place and start to pull the carriage and as gravity and common sense come into play, the downgraded hill starts to make the carriage uncontrollable and the people start trying to control the speed and within 45 seconds six guys are holding on for dear life running a full sprint just not to get run over if they let go part three as they are almost in a full sprint cartoon style where their legs were going 100 mph but the cart was going faster the midget at this point is not even touching the ground but his legs were still in running motion i will never forget that visual the carriage comes flying down the road and incredibly rolls by the grooves on the dirt road right into the hayfield and stops about 20 feet from the altar. It was quite literally the funniest thing I had ever seen. Then to put the icing on the cake the reception was a non-alcoholic event as groom's family was super religious and it was a potluck dinner. We paid for their cake as our contribution for the potluck. My wife being the saint she has spent $600 on that thing and the groom pushed the bride's face into 
it like an 8th grader giving a 6th grader a swirly in a bathroom stall and destroy the whole thing. Not one piece was served. Oh, but how a store brand cola can hit the spot on like a nice 7 and 7 on a hot summer's day total stuff show. Worked at a very high-end golf club in Seattle that regularly hosted expensive weddings. The Samoan wedding is probably my favorite. All the groomsmen were wearing lime green vests with matching lime green snapbacks. The wedding party must order food from the restaurant at the golf club. As stated in the contract, they order Domino's instead and the pizza guy literally brings these people pizza as they sit in a fancy restaurant. The bride and groom got into a fistfight right before the ceremony, delaying it a bit until bruises could be covered with makeup. They hired a live band to play at the reception, but didn't feed theme this year. During their first break, the lead singer decides to zoom down the hill to grab some McDonald's for the crew. He is pulled over and arrested for drunk driving. His one call from jail, I can't play at your wedding anymore, I'm in jail. My aunt married her third husband in Waffle House in Atlanta, Georgia. They chose the booth where Kid Rock was once arrested. Wasn't trashy, but I'm Australian and IA married an Italian. Our venue offered open bar including spirits here in Italy. You can't really get that in house without paying arm and a leg and there is a reason why. They were not prepared for the Australians. My small army of 20 or so friends drunk the equivalent of plus 300 people. The venue ran out and the guy who organized it reckons he made a loss. Until that day all the Italians thought I was the looses. See you next Tuesday. They had seen. Then they learned I am the quiet one of the group. The groom is a plumber. The flowers the men wore on their lapels were mini toilets with flowers in theme this year. The centerpieces were plungers. No, I'm not making this up. Mine. We had a baby on the way so changed our plans to save money. We had a registry due in the center of town. Our ceremony was delayed when there was a suicide scare in the building with some dude from another party out on the window ledge. Afterwards we literally walked 200 meters up the road to the pub, bought everyone a round of drinks. Then we walked across town to a nice restaurant we had booked. We didn't ask for gifts, only asked that people pay for their meal. We bought another round of drinks in the restaurant.